Hey, good morning to everybody. I am here at Roots and Refuge Farm. This is where I work. Um, I don't know if y'all have ever seen Jess's channel before. It's a pretty popular YouTube channel. But uh, if you've never seen it, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, she's probably also going to do a little video of what I'm doing here, but I'm going to do a, a little bit more in depth on my video. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is attempting to make some chinampas. Now, I don't think this is the original type of chinampas that they would use in, uh, I believe it was South American agriculture, uh, Central American as well. I think the, uh, the Aztecs would actually do this. I think one of their cities, Tenochtitlan, I'll put that, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that word, but uh, their city, I believe, was actually built on a chinampa system where they would have gardens and they'd, they'd canoe through their gardens and stuff. So it's a little bit different method than what they did. A lot, a lot, what I've seen on YouTube as far as chinampas is a lot of uh, working in floodplain environments and, and using canals and such, but I don't have that here. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to make a, uh, like a border basically, and we're gonna fill it with mulch and we're gonna have it come about this high. The, the organic matter is gonna come off from the surface of the water about by this much. So we're gonna attempt to do that. I've only ever seen one other person do it uh, in this kind of way. It was ABC Acres. If you wanna check them out on YouTube as well, I'll put a link in the description. I'm gonna throw on my muck boots and I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna try to make sure, I don't know if it's quite shallow enough right here. You need a shallow area to do this. You can't really do this in deep water. I guess you could, but you'd need some really deep poles and a, and a lot of organic matter to fill it up. So I'm gonna walk around in my muck boots and see if I can find a shallow area, and then we'll start building it, and we'll see how it goes. Um, this is my first time doing this, and as I said, I haven't seen many examples like this, so it's gonna kinda, we'll probably post an update in a few months and, and see what it looks like. It is the end of summer here in South Carolina, so Maybe we'll try to plant some brassicas or some sort of fall crop in here. I don't know, we'll see. It's actually fairly deep right here. So the edge of the chinampa will probably end up coming out like right here or so. That's gonna take a lot of organic matter. I'm gonna go up here and see if it's any shallower. A cool thing about these chinampas are that they don't require any water. They're one of the most productive agricultural systems in the world. As I said, the organic matter in the soil is going to be about that far off the surface of the water. So you never have to water anything. The, the, the roots can just tap down into this pond right here. And, and the idea is you don't have to water at all. So really useful if you have a pond. If this is easy to do, we'll see. I think this area might be better. You see these weeds right here? That means it's likely a lot shallower. Yeah, I'm gonna try out this area right in here. It's actually really hard ground right here. I'm kind of worried about being able to get these posts in. This should be a good area as far as depth. That feels like straight rock though. I don't know how I'm gonna get down in there. Huh. I expect it to be sediment here, so. We'll see. So that shallower area would be better to do this, but I think I'm gonna choose the deeper area because it has a lot more sediment. And I don't think I'll be able to drive these posts in the ground over there where it's straight rock. This area where uh, their farm is, is notorious for having a lot of slate rock or actually in the Carolina slate belt. And you can't drive wooden posts through that. So I'm gonna work over here in the deeper area and just use more organic matter to fill it up since I have sediment down here to drop the post into.
no. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drive these stakes down about that far apart and then I'm gonna tuck uh, other pieces of cedar trees in between them. Now these sticks do float, so I guess I'm probably just gonna hold them all down and at the end I'm just gonna screw the top one into the, the post right there. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. As you can see, I probably could have cut these sticks a lot shorter. I mean, I'm probably gonna chainsaw them off like right here or so. As far as, I'm gonna hammer this one down some more, but I could have cut these shorter just so you don't have to strain sledgehammering it down. Those should be good. I'm gonna do them on the other side now. We might still be get a trellis on here. Don't do this in the summer. These freaking waders are hot, man. If you're a taller human being, this might be easier for you. I'm vertically challenged. All right, so my corner posts, and those are just middle posts, they're done. I'm gonna do this basically. I'm gonna just lay these cedar logs in between them. You can see how they're floating a little bit. I left enough space where I can maybe get two rows of cedars. If not, we'll just do one and we'll just attach them to this back one and maybe that one right there either way um so yeah i'm just gonna get in here and i'm gonna just step on these cedars and just lay them right on top of each other um i'm not gonna worry about them overhanging too much all right guys so i've been out here for a few hours now and i pretty much got these borders done it's a couple a couple things i need to talk to you about first off these these little end pieces right here, these came from the local sawmill. They'll give these to you for free. So check out those places if they're around you. I just drilled these top pieces in. The, you really need two people to do this because the boards up underneath it keep floating up. I basically put the ones that would be on the bottom down first. And then I held those down while I, while I drilled these in right here. This one, and then I put this one on top of it and drilled that one in too. So that's a hard part about that. Um, there's gonna be a lot of gaps at the bottom. The boards do go mostly down, but I can get my foot underneath this. So I'm gonna take all these end pieces right here and I'm gonna just put most of them on this end right here. Down here, it actually goes all the way to the bottom pretty much. Yeah, that one goes to the bottom. This one's this one. Yeah, that, one, that one's a nice wall right here actually. But uh, this one still needs, I'm going to just line it all up with these, these stakes along the back as you see right there. See how they float up like that? That one came undone. So, But yeah, I'm going to smash these in the ground and then we'll fill this up with dirt and we'll show you what it looks like then. The dirt's going to come up to here by the way, pretty much. Maybe, maybe like right here. So, But yeah, we're going to put straight up topsoil in here and then we're going to top it off with mulch. So we'll be back soon. All right, guys, so I think I'm done with the border. A couple of things here for sure. I ended up putting a lot more stakes than I imagined. I imagine you could actually probably just make a chinampa just straight up out of putting stakes in a line like this, but I'm a little bit worried if you did that, that you'd get the outward pressure of the soil and it might pull all the stakes back. So maybe it's good to have some on the inside drilled in to these inside poles, but we'll see how it holds up. You see, I don't know if you can see a lot of them underwater, but there's stakes all along here. That corner is where I had the gap at the bottom. So we put a bunch of stakes all up in there to try to close that up. And now I'm going to fill it with soil, I guess. One more thing, this is a cool idea potentially. You might would just be able to get these, these end pieces. Like I said, you can get these for free. And you see how I, I cut one off and I stuck it in and it holds really good right here. So maybe you could just line them up like this. You might would have to put like two rows of them or something, but that's an idea as well. All right, folks, the topsoil is in. It's holding up really well. I cannot step on it a bit though. I'll sink down. Uh, from here, I'm gonna put uh, probably about a five or six inch layer of mulch on top. And then I'm gonna basically be done. I'll probably actually put some stepping stones like 
right here in the middle so you can access this whole thing from the inside as well and then if you have to you put on your muck boots and go around but yeah it's got topsoil So this thing really is just a giant wicking bed. Um, if you're interested in doing this on a smaller scale, if you don't have a pond or something, look up wicking beds. Jesse from uh, Willowbrook Homestead was just here a second ago. And he said he actually has some videos on it. So maybe I'll try to find them and link them in the description. Check out his channel. He's got good stuff too. So there y'all have it. A made Chinampa. I'm guessing over the next few days, this might settle down a little bit. So maybe I'll have to add more mulch. I don't know, we'll see. I don't think there's much getting out the sides. But um, yeah, hopefully this works good. I'll admit this is probably, it's not practical if you're trying to grow vegetables on like a market scale, of course. But um, it's a fun little experiment. We'll see, how, we'll see how well it works. We'll keep posting updates on what we're growing in here. Well, like I said, I'm gonna let this settle and then we'll transplant it to some brassicas or something. We'll see what Jess wants to do with it, but uh, yeah, a chinampa. If y'all have any, if y'all have any better ideas about how to do this, let me know. I've been brainstorming what to do. I really, I don't think I'd want to use like metal or anything. I think wood is the best option, but the fact that it just floats up like that is is annoying. So I don't know. I'll probably brainstorm tonight and actually come up with something better than what we did here. But we'll we'll use this for now. See how good it works. And then maybe if, if this works really good, we'll get the, uh, the construction guy's brains on it because I can't build anything above ground really well, much less underwater like I did here. So, yeah. Good stuff. Thank y'all for watching. Bye-bye.